Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one's talking about the state of the war community in terms of some of the bigger issues it's facing, such as the situation with the CWL, um, engineered bases, the balance of the game, stuff like that. So I'm going to be talking about that, giving my thoughts, giving you guys a place to talk in the comments below. And um, actually, I was kind of avoiding making a video on this, but basically I got back from the tennis tournament today. Um, went f okay. I mean, we won a few, we lost a few. Uh, nothing too special. But I got back. I didn't have a whole lot of content to make because this... This war didn't produce a lot of good attacks. Their bases were kind of bad. You'll see a few good replays in the background, but that's about it. Um, so I thought it'd be a good time to address some of these issues and at least give my thoughts one more of these videos. I know a lot of people make videos on this, um, especially over the last few weeks. There's been a lot of videos on it um, by other YouTubers, but you know I think it's something that I'll, I'll talk about uh, briefly in this video, the, uh, the different issues that we face. And to be fair, I think that it's important to say this tends to get super over dramatized. Whenever it's something that uh, people care a lot about, you're going to see uh, a lot of drama, a lot of stuff going on in YouTube video comments, just in the community in general. And I'm not saying that's like a bad thing. It just happens when when people are facing the something being jeopardized that they really care about, or at least being jeopardized in their eyes. You can judge it how you want. But um, when this types of things happen, people tend to really get, um, I guess, overreact. So um, it's important to remember that, you know, things kind of go up and down. They have uh, in the past in the war community. And it's important to just uh, just keep a level head through all of this. That's what I try to do. And uh, I'm going to try to look at things kind of from a bigger picture in terms of the, the game as a whole, especially people who play Clan Wars, not just the upper, upper CWL league, because that's kind of what I'm immersed, uh, immersed in, but I try to uh, look at other types of gameplay as well when making these types of videos. So that all being said, I guess I'll talk about CWL first, just kind of give some thoughts on it. It's It was a good first season, I think, for CWL. It got off to a good start. We had, I think, Dark Looters uh, won last year with, I believe, an undefeated uh, record in the Invite League. So uh, it was a very successful, I guess you could say, season. The problem is whenever th something gets successful and big, more people are attracted to it, and specifically people who are going to play the game in a non-fair play way. They're going to uh, use different types of uh, modding and cheating and whatever, and it just it starts to attract people because there's more recognition, there's more at stake, uh, there's more to be won and more to be lost. So people are going to try to uh, do whatever it takes to get the victory, especially if they can get away with it. And um, it's sad that that happens, but it's just it's not just Clash of Clans. It's anything. You'll I mean, if NFL players only got paid, or I guess I'll say baseball players, if MLB players only got paid, you know, fifty thousand a year, you wouldn't have um, in the past such big scandals with uh, doing all types of steroids and stuff because no one would care. But when the stakes are high, when it really matters, that's when people who um, are going to do whatever it takes to win come onto the scene. So I don't think it's any surprise that they've um, that we've seen some in instances of cheating and modding and stuff like that. And it's a very difficult situation because if, if the modding and the cheating and all that stuff could just be figured out, that's it. I mean, the war's... Are inherently fair. Every clan gets two. Every clan uh, member gets two attacks. All that kind of stuff. So as long as you can just get um, the same number of fair play people on each side, uh, operating under the same conditions, then you're good. It's just it's hard to achieve that. And there's no easy fix. Anyone who says there's an easy fix, I don't think is taking into account the entire situation. Um, first of all. It's difficult, and I know a lot of people have been talking about how they need to change it and make it so um, people who have been modding in the past like can no longer be in it. And maybe that's a good policy, maybe it's not, but it's so hard to implement that when this isn't like a physical in-person thing. People could just kind of make another account, and you know, there's like GroupMe, or not GroupMe, Discord is what we use now. Um, 
there's like discord chats and stuff so i guess you can kind of start to fish out whether it's someone who like is known in the community but this is not like a professional sport there's no like blacklists and stuff so people could just kind of use a different account and it would be difficult to monitor who's been in a cheating clan in the past who's not been um it's difficult to follow that so it's hard to enforce player specific rules in terms of getting rid of some player stuff like that it definitely takes an effort um the administration the admins i don't know i there's been a lot of talk that they've been doing a terrible job and maybe they have been i wish i knew enough to comment more on that um but regardless it's a difficult thing because all of them have a stake in the game and that's going to make them biased you're not going to find someone who's going to do it in their free time who doesn't play clash of clans it's very hard to find a non bias uh administration because why would they be doing it and people say supercell should be in charge but we got to be realistic it for a company to who has millions of players to spend time going on like a case-by-case basis talking to clan i mean it would get insane for them to be trying to figure out like whether one person in a clan was modding whether one clan should be uh, allowed to stay in the league it would just be way too much and it wouldn't make any sense for the company to do it from an economic sp- standpoint if nothing else so um, that's not a realistic thing especially with how small of a bubble CWL is people like to hype it up but really it's um, maybe a few thousand people is all it's reaching to be generous so uh, it's definitely not the majority of players or anywhere near a significant fraction of people who are in CWL or really watching it with any interest So um, it's important to keep that in mind and it's difficult to find people that are going to be non-biased and are going to to have a stake in the game and to want to do it. So I think the the solution is to have a lot of people involved. You can't have a very select few. It has to be democratic. Um, Right now, I think it is to a certain extent. There is um, quite a few different people who make the ultimate decisions. They have like a, not like a panel, but I forget what you call it. Just they have a, a group of people who make decisions, I guess, like a, I'm spacing out any type of words to describe it, but it is somewhat democratic. So I think that's a good thing. Um, from what I've heard, there was a little bit of issues with disrespect between the uh, community people, the actual people in the CWL and the administration. And I think that just kind of happens when, when you have, you know, high tensions, people who really care about the game. There's a lot of back and forth, some close wars, people really getting into it. Um, so I don't want to blame the administration outright. I don't know enough to uh, talk about what happened, but I think, you know, they've been, uh, at least putting a lot of time into it. It seems like, I mean, they're typing up huge, uh, essays of their decisions and stuff. And I think it's easy to sit back and try to nitpick what they're doing. Um, when in reality, you know, okay, how about you take your entire Sunday to come to a decision about, um, within this game whether this one clan should be banned and whether these players should be allowed to play. It's not. It's very easy to sit in the sidelines and kind of be an armchair quarterback, but I think the admins, at least from what I've seen, haven't done that bad of a job, um, and I might get a lot of pushback in the comments for saying that. And to, to be honest, I don't know all the details, but I think the fact that it's been up and running, that it was successful the first season, and that um, the second season's kind of had a lot of trouble with clans dropping out, clans being caught with uh, cheaters, I guess, and different stuff like that. The administration, I think, has done an okay job. It's it's really difficult to deal with that once that stuff starts coming out. Because if you're too just um, solid, like uh, if you're too hard on on all this stuff, there'd be no clans left. Let's be honest. Um, they could probably be more strict on certain things, but if you start doing um, ex post facto, I think is what it's called. If you start going back and getting clans for stuff they've previously done, you're very quickly going to eliminate um, a lot of clans and basically ruin the entire second season. So I think for now, just kind of use the duct tape, seal it up. And uh, for season three, hopefully there is a season three. I think there will be. Uh, try to improve off of what happened, change the system a little bit, maybe change the rules. Uh, I think that the community should really be taken into account. I am, there shouldn't be a few people voting on how the season, how the league is set up. Sorry for this terrible attack in the background, by the way. I'm getting desperate here. Um, this is going longer than I thought. Um, as, but as far as uh, 
as far as actually setting up the league, I think it should be much more democratic. The clan should vote or something. And then decisions within the season, once things start, then those should be more of a, okay, a group of people make a decision based on the uh, the evidence. But initially setting things up, I think the it should be entirely up to the people, the players, um, because it just doesn't make any sense to have that um, one panel of people make all the decisions in terms of actually how the league is going to be set up, what the rules are going to be. Uh, once it gets going, it's um, it's harder to keep it like so d- democratic. So then you got to just for sake of efficiency and for sake of uh, taking out a lot of the bias the clans might develop over the season, then you got to start to um, to try to cut cut down the decisions to a, a group of people who are who are going to be at least somewhat qualified to make those decisions. So I'm hopeful for CWL. I, I don't think it's like going to be a failure or anything. I um, I think Genesis will be in it next season. I don't know if uh, how it'll be set up at all, but we should be in some form of CWL or some type of competitive league, whatever uh, the best option is. Let's go back up here. Whatever the best option is, so um, we'll just kind of see how it goes. But I, I had fun, and I think it's on a personal thing. It's just fun planning attacks, executing, and even working with the clan to uh, try to get the three stars as much as possible, try to win the war, just a fun experience. And uh, I guess for Genesis, we weren't kind of going for the wins too much towards the end. It was kind of like, all right, we're not we're not going to probably go to the playoffs, but we can try to do our best to uh, to have some fun and to get the victory. Um, we, there was a lot of people on planning, trying to get it done. So we definitely were fighting all the way through, had some very unlucky wars, but anyway, don't want to make this too much about my own clan. Um, so yeah, I, I think CWL is something that it's going to be difficult for it to be big and successful because like I said, once it gets big, that's when the problems start happening because people come over and start to, uh, to try to take advantage of the system. I think the, I don't I don't want to talk about the the possibilities of bans and stuff like that because at the end of the day um, it is going to take people who are not fair play um, being detected and banned probably to make this work in the at, at the end because honestly people can keep making new accounts like I said it's hard to blacklist people in a game where you don't see them in person um, so I think it might uh, need to be more strict. Uh, policies and software detection. I don't know how easy it is for Supercell to keep up with the current use of mods and stuff like that. I think it probably is pretty difficult because it's so easy for them to evolve one little thing. Then Supercell has to go through and try to change their whole algorithm. So I don't know a whole lot of the tech side to that, so I won't comment on it too much. But hopefully um, we can continue to fight uh, people who are cheating. And I think there's already been a lot of huge steps towards that direction in terms of the initial bans that came out way back when, uh, right when they started banning people for modding. And I think that it's less prevalent. There are people that are still doing it, of course, but um, it's very difficult to eradicate something like that. And I think, you know, as long as clans can do their best to be upstanding and uh, the company Supercell can uh, do their best to continue to try to fight uh, cheaters eventually there can be some kind of successful or near successful solution where it gets to the point where modding is just not something that's really seen much. Um, but it always is difficult to to know that there's no closet modders. There's always that possibility in the back of every clan's mind. So um, anyway, those are some, some thoughts on CWL and that kind of stuff. In terms of engineering, I want to talk about that as well because it's probably the other big issue. And I guess I'll end on this. Um, my thoughts on the engineering clans and how to fix that. This one I think is a little bit easier. Um, and it's it's a matchmaking system, so it comes down to the algorithms that are used. Personally, I would like to see at least like a minimum on town halls. Like once you're a town hall nine, you will have a higher war weight than any town hall eight, no matter what. Like a town hall minimum. I've also heard just make whatever the per, the uh, individual player has more weight for offense or defense. Make that the make the highest one the their war weight. So they have a defensive weight and an offensive weight, and whichever is higher is their war weight. That's a possibility. I think there's a lot of good solutions that could work, so I'd like to see um, one of those implemented because those are much easier to do than try to fix the CWL system. So I think 
that is something that I'll, you know, I'll try to talk to. Um, I don't necessarily have a whole lot of influence, but um, it's something I'll try to push for whenever I'm uh, in a situation where I can, you know, give my thoughts and feedback on the game. And uh, I'll talk, if I can, to, you know, people in Supercell about it. But um, I think it is a little bit of an easy fix. I say that a little bit naive, probably, because I don't know exactly all the, uh, how the matchmaking system works. And, I mean, it's pretty clear it's, it's defensive weight because engineered bases are possible. So it has to be mainly defensive. But I don't know possible repercussions if they change it. Um, it's just something they'll have to work on, I guess, if they want to invest their time into making that change in the game, which I definitely think is worth it because the clan war system is very difficult, not necessarily just for clans um, that are participating in the CWL in arranged wars, all the friendly war stuff, but for clans that want to be competitive and are searching just in the random search button, that is when it gets very rough because there are a lot of clans like that, probably even more than there are CWL type clans, definitely more than CWL type clans, that want a fair matchup and they're not getting it. So that's one more thing I'd like to see changed. I think it's easier and uh, hopefully you guys uh, agree in the comments or not. Let me know what you think. But that'll do it for this video. Um, my thoughts weren't the most organized, I know, but I wanted to just get some ideas out there for you guys to think about um, because at the end of the day, it's difficult, things are complicated, but there are some concrete things that can be done. And uh, I think that the war community in general is in a pretty good uh, state. The update was a little bit tough for a lot of people because um, it didn't address a lot of concerns people had. But I think as people play it more, they're starting to enjoy the update more from what I've seen. And I'm hoping the next update, or at least one of the future updates soon, We'll have some uh, more changes to address the balance. Um, we saw a few balancing changes, but maybe some more stuff at Town Hall 10. Uh, we'll see. Definitely all stuff that I will do my best to push for. And I'll check out the comments below. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye, Sectatron out.